Hello, folks. Welcome to Kudlow. I'm Larry Kudlow. In just a moment, we're going to have a Washington report from the great Peter Ducey about Israel and other related news. And then Senator Eric Schmidt's going to be here to tell us about the Republican Senate meeting with House Speaker Mike Johnson. Later on the show, we're going to be talking politics about the Gavin Newsom Ron DeSantis debate on Sean Hannity. I think it's tonight. Is it tonight or tomorrow night? Anyway, it's coming up on Sean Hannity. And then Steve Forbes is going to be here to lament the worst wave of anti Semitism since the 1930s. But first up, let's talk about the economy for a moment and the fact that the Biden administration, as always, cannot tell the truth about the American economy. Now, this is a long suffering movie that we've all seen many times before. But just to refresh, Here's White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre just this past Monday. Please listen and weep. When we walked into this administration, the economy was on a, tail, a tailspin. That is the fact. Because of the last administration, because of the Trump administration, the president came in, he passed the American Rescue Plan, which was able to get the economy back on its feet. And let's not forget, what Republicans are doing on the other side of, of uh, again, Pennsylvania Avenue. They're trying to increase health care costs. They want to get rid of Medicare. They want to get rid of uh, Social Security. Oh, my goodness. You know, I hardly know where to begin. There are so many falsehoods coming from that White House podium. First of all, there was no tailspin. By the first quarter of 2021, the American economy was growing at about 6.5% with an inflation rate that was less than one and a half percent. So Joe Biden takes office January 20th, essentially riding atop a soaring economy without inflation. Gasoline prices barely above two dollars a gallon. And those are facts, Madam Press Secretary, F-A-C-T-S, facts. You can look it up. Now, the economic rebound from the COVID collapse was a V-shaped recovery. And I can tell you, I know from experience, because as the former NEC director, along with my, Kevin, and my pal Kevin Hassett at the CEA and Tyler Goodspeed at the CEA, we were touting a V-shaped recovery and took enormous flack from the liberal Washington media and the Democrats. But we were right and they were wrong. Trump policies of tax cuts, deregulation, and drill baby drill had created sound economic fundamentals. So as the COVID clouds disappeared, the pro-growth policies drove the economy right back up. And the smartest thing Joe Biden could have done was, was wait for it, hang on a second, done nothing. That's what he should have done, nothing. Because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But no. The Bidens had to push for a $2 trillion spending plan to scratch every left-wing Democratic itch. And all that did was jack up the inflation rate ultimately to 9%. And by the first half of 2022, a year later, the economy was in recession with two negative GDP quarters. That's Bidenomics. And since then, they've continued to spend and regulate and tax and their socialist Green New Deal war on fossil fuels has not only made all manner of energy products far more expensive here at home, but it has raised oil prices around the world, thereby benefiting our enemies like Russia and Iran, where Biden foreign policy continues to appease rather than deter. And the same can be said for China, which is financing two wars in Ukraine and Israel with massive oil purchases from Russia and Iran. That's Bidenomics. And as far as the charge that Republicans want to get rid of Medicare and Social Security, that is just stupid, sophomoric, malarkey politics. It's a pack of lies because the Republicans are in favor of no such thing. And Biden knows that. In fact, even in the State of the Union, when Biden tried to use the same lie about the big entitlements, and even single Republicans, every single Republican in the chamber rose up to boo him because it was completely wrong. And people see right through these lies. You know, Biden said recently Thanksgiving was a lot cheaper than before. But in fact, the American Farm Bureau came out and said, wait a second, 
Thanksgiving costs were 41% higher than 2020. And right down the line, cost after cost has risen enormously from Bidenomics. Real wages have been falling almost steadily for three years. High energy and grocery costs add to that soaring insurance costs. Interest rates on borrowing to buy homes or cars. And don't forget credit cards. All those rates are soaring. That's Bidenomics. And in terms of the next 12 months or so, the reliable conference board index of leading indicators has fallen 19 consecutive months, nearly as bad as anything we've seen since World War II. So the threat of a recession next year is rising. And that's why Americans are so unhappy with the economy. The recent New York Times Siena College poll shows overwhelmingly that people rate the economy poor or only fair. That includes 70% making less than 50 grand, 61% making 50 to 100,000. That includes 89% of young people between 18 and 29. That includes 75% of blacks and the same 75% for Hispanics. Women raised, registered 65%, poor or just fair. All that is a vote of no confidence in Bidenomics. Nobody cares about a bunch of phony lies coming from a press secretary who has no clue about the subject matter. But most disturbing of all, the same lies come from the commander in chief who was trying to lie his way through a botched left wing big government socialist policy that has utterly failed the vast majority of working folks in this country. Indeed, the reason Donald Trump is soaring in the polls and now running ahead of Biden as well as his primary opponents is that working folks of all incomes, no matter ethnicity, color, sex, they want a return to the peace and prosperity of the Trump years. That's what's really going on out there, no matter how many fibs Corinne Jean-Pierre tries to sell. And that's my riff.